on behalf of the people of the state of Colorado. Can you do that last name again, please? Gratiano. Catherine Strobel and Kimberly Chalmers on behalf of Ms. Stout, who appears in custody. All right, we're here for uh, filing of charges um, and entry of appearance of counsel. But before we start, uh, I want to remind everyone that video or audio recording is prohibited. Um, there is a pool camera that will provide uh, footage to the media. I understand this is a digital age. I get it. Um, and I know that some reporters use their electronic devices to take notes, to blog, to tweet, those kinds of things. Um, you can use them to do that so long as it does not create a distraction and there is no noise. Um, however, if anyone is caught reporting any portion of these proceedings, video, audio, photographs, anything like that, that person will be required to leave immediately, and it may be that electronic devices will be prohibited at future proceedings. The court also understands that this is an emotional case for a lot of people. Almost all cases involving a charge of first-degree murder are the judges in this district handle a number of first degree murder cases all the time. This case is governed by the same rules of law, evidence, and procedure that apply to all of those cases. In addition, please remember that audible comments and emotional displays or outbursts are strictly prohibited. If at any time during the proceedings, you feel that at the onset of an emotional reaction that may violate the court's order, Please quietly and discreetly exit the courtroom. <laughs> there is no in and out. Once you leave, for whatever reason, you will not be permitted back in. <coughs> With that, filing of charges, Mr. Allen. Thank you, Your Honor. We uh, earlier today filed the formal charges to the court system, and I'm handing you a paper copy to the defense team now. Yeah, when did you do that? Uh, it was earlier this morning, Judge. Okay, I can advise the court of what those charges are if you'd like. Yes, because it hasn't made it out of the clerk's office yet. So okay. when you file it downstairs electronically, it takes roughly about a day or so for it to get to us. Uh, <coughs> we looked at it and it's, oh, it just got lost. The magic of the uh, digital edition. Yeah. yeah. As I looked at like new, it wasn't there yet. <coughs> so what I have is four counts, is that correct? That's exactly right, Judge. All right. Ms. Strohler. We have received that, Your Honor, and we have advised Ms. Stout. Are Sorry. You okay. <coughs> um, of the four count complaint and information, we further read more advice then. Okay. All right. <coughs> and um, there's a couple of want to proceed this case because of count one, uh, the first degree murder. <coughs> this would proceed. There's some water over there. I have some water here, okay. I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, this case would normally proceed to a proof evident presumption grade during, um, is that what you want to set at this point in time? Judge, we're actually asking for a review hearing to be set in 21 to 30 days. Um, Mr. Allen has let us know that it's unlikely that we'll receive any discovery in this case um, until 21 days from now. Um, and so as a result, we are not in a position where we can set the case for preliminary hearing and proof evident presumption great hearing. We also don't have access to the arrest warrant affidavit. I'm, I'm going to deal with that in a moment. Right. And so we have no idea. We, we are not in a position where we no. can tell the judge. And, and I know that. I know okay. that you don't have the PC affidavit. What's going on with the discovery? Judge, uh, this case spanned the investigative portion of this case. It still actually is ongoing to one degree, but um, it spanned roughly five weeks before the arrest affidavit was it, um, right. given I, to a judge. I have seen the PC affidavit. Yes. Okay. And so the inve or the uh, discovery in this case is very voluminous. Um, we're over a thousand pages already based on what I've been told from the sheriff's office and the FBI. There is um, tons of video evidence, um, electronic <laughs> data from cell phones and that kind of thing. Um, so we are working, uh, they're working on it now, and we have advised them of what that 21 days looks like. 
as far as when we need to turn over discovery to defense. Um, I just know that because of the, the just the sheer volume of this case, I don't even have reports yet. Okay, um, and before we get too far down that road, there's a couple of things that I need to deal with. Um, first of all, um, Ms. You want me to direct these to Ms. Strobel and Ms. Chalmers? I'm good, Judge. I can answer okay. your questions. Uh, Ms. Strobel, I know that there are search warrants. Um, I've had cases in the past where sometimes they want the search warrant before the proof evidence presumption grade, sometimes they don't. What are you wanting to do? We want copies of the warrants. Is that the court's question? Yes. Yes, we do. Before the proof evidence presumption yes, grade. Yes, Judge. Um, as you know, or actually, as counsel may not know, because a lot of them don't, those search warrants are not filed in the electronic file for this proceeding. How many warrants are we talking about? Judge, the last number that I heard was over 107 search 107. warrants in this case. Yes, 107. 107. Okay. Um, I think that that number is bigger than that number, though, just based on uh, that was last week sometime that I heard that. Are they all, uh, were they all issued locally by a judge locally? No, there were some search warrants issued in South Carolina as well. Okay, so it took longer to get those. And all of those were done with motions to seal as well. Okay. Except for South Carolina that does not have um, the sealing process that we have locally. Okay. would be my thought. First of all, um, I am going to order that the PC affidavit itself or a copy of the PC affidavit be released in discovery to defense immediately. Um, that I think uh, will give them some idea about what the investigation is, what it is that they think they may need to have at some point in the future. Do um, you have it? No. Um, my request, Judge, is that the court order it be emailed to us rather than it go through the discovery process. It will just take longer. Um, if we could, if, that's if, if they could that's email fine. it to us, we would get it directly. It? Yeah, that's that's fine with us too, Judge. I don't know if it's actually in the in ISIS. Um, it, it is, but it's sealed. Okay, and I'm not going to unseal it just yet. That's a different issue that I'll deal with here in uh, a few minutes. Okay, I didn't know if you could just leave it as protected so that only defense can get it. I didn't know if that was an option or not. Um, we can certainly email it though. Probably, let's email it just to okay. make sure. That's probably the best uh, logistic way to get it to them. Um, because that way, at least they'll know sort of where the electronic issues are or where the search warrant issues are. So email that to them uh, by Monday. I'll do it uh, when I get back to the office. Perfect. So they'll have that. taking the docket day off for that trial for April 14th, if you could do that at 4 o'clock. Um, I actually, before I um, get in trouble with my staff, which is the best staff in the building, as you know, 
Um, I call up them and handle dates because I will uh, not get it right. Um, but my thought is that we have a status conference uh, to find out where we are with respect to warrants. Um, and I'll give the parties more instruction here in just a moment. You wanted the 14th, which is a Tuesday? If, if that works for the court. We can do April 14th in the afternoon. Is that the Three o'clock? It is a civil week. And we do have a trial set up. Right uh, I think it'll be all right. If we did it at this time? Uh, we can do it at 3. Okay. So April 14th at 3 p.m.? And just for the record, that works with us and with the victim's family. Okay. So April 14th, 3 p.m. We're going to do a couple of things between now and then. The first thing that Mr. Allen's going to do is release the PC affidavit by email uh, to Ms. Strobel. <coughs> Second thing that Mr. Allen is going to have for me uh, no later than April 14 is the number on the warrants and where they are. Uh, the ones that are here are going to be easier to access than the ones that are in South Carolina. Um, and I want to know what kind of warrants we're talking about in South Carolina, whether it's, I mean, I, don't, I have no idea. Could it be anything from wiretap to a search of a car or phone, like, you know, whatever. Those were search warrants, Judge. No, well, I know that, but yeah. I need uh, a search of what. So I just need to know that so I have some idea about what that plan is going to look like. Um, so we'll deal with that on April uh, 14. Um, And then we should have some idea about how long it's going to take to get these warrants released. And um, my read on, as I said, I've read the PC affidavit. My read on some of this is that there's going to need to be uh, some significant redactions as a result of Chief Justice Directive 0501 uh, because there's dates of births, yes. all kinds of personal information like that. Is that fair? That's absolutely fair. <laughs> okay. Um, when we come back, if you can give me an idea about how many pages we're talking about, because it's going to be our clerk's office that has to deal with the redactions on the search warrants. So um, I think we're talking about um, there's two issues with the search warrants. When we do our discovery, um, there will be a section in our discovery that goes to defense that will have every search warrant in it. Um, so they'll have access to that as soon as the discovery book is put together and released to them. Okay. Okay. And then I, I'm not sure if the court is asking for release um, publicly um, on those search warrants, the affidavits. Not yet. Okay. Um, I don't know. There hasn't been a request for that. I don't know if there will be, and I don't know if there will be entertaining. Uh, one, of the one of the reasons I ask that is because uh, at the end I'm going to get to the web page. Okay. Um, but I don't need to have that information. But it sounds like you can just release the warrants to defense through regular discovery. That, that's how it typically will go, and it will be done on this case as well. It will typically okay. be a separate section in the discovery packet that goes to them. Okay. All right. Um, okay. And both sides have gotten a copy of the method of filing pleadings um, that I sent out. I think it was order four. <coughs> Yes, Judge, the people acknowledge that order. Order 02 and Ms. Strobel. Yes, Judge. Ms. Chalmers is familiar with that because that's the same, it's the same process that I used in Calvary. I would do that. Okay. Um, let's see. And um, there is a uh, motion by. Because it's represented in the motion, 
that the prosecution does not object to the unsealing of the probable cause affidavit. Is that accurate? That's act that is act accurate, Judge. Um, the status of uh, the motions to seal were based on the investigation during the um, formulation of that investigation. That issue for us has expired, and we don't have that same concern that we had before. Um, so that's why we have no objection. Okay. Um, <coughs> So we have the date. Um, okay. Um, I want to. I know that there are uh, some members of the press that are here. Um, I, I hope you'll listen to this part um, and follow it. Um, we'll see. Um, the rules in the state of Colorado govern what media access is available uh, during criminal trials. Um, rule three a three a of the Public Access to Information Records Rules, which was promulgated by the Colorado Supreme Court, says, there shall be no expanded media coverage of pretrial hearing, uh, there shall be no expanded media coverage of pretrial hearings in criminal cases except advisements and arraignments. That's where we are. So the next step here, you heard that we had set a date uh, for uh, April 14th. Um, that is not subject to expanded media coverage by rule in this state. The next thing that we may do after that is set up for a proof evident presumption grade hearing. There will be evidence presented at that hearing, but that hearing cannot, uh, we cannot allow expanded media coverage by rule in that hearing either. Um, it would be helpful to me and my staff uh, if you didn't file motions requesting expanded media coverage since they would be summarily denied we have to read them and, and issue an order denying them. But it would be helpful if you didn't do that because by rule um, it cannot be granted. I think that resolves all outstanding matters um, that I had. Mr. Allen, is there anything else that you wanted the court to address? Judge, I guess just formally for the record, it sounds like um, defense is waiving the requirement to have that proof evident presumption great within the time requirements. Good point. Ms. Strobel? Judge, we would just like to reserve our right to proof evident presumption great at this time. No, and we'll wait the 35 days. Okay, right. Okay, as I understand it, I, I think uh, I didn't um, interpret your request for a delay as a waiver of the hearing. I, I get it. You got to see what uh, the PC affidavit and perhaps the search warrants have to say before you can make a determination about that and be prepared for a proof of that presumption right here. But you're waiting the time requirements re uh, related to that. Is yes. that correct? Okay. All right, is there anything else that we need to address from the prosecution standpoint, Mr. Allen? Both the defense and people filed some motions. Are we going to take those up at the next court setting? Yeah, we'll take them up at the next court setting as I, unless there's something immediate that you want me uh, to answer. I mean, it, I looked at uh, the motions and they appear to be the fairly standard stock motions the defense, as far as I know, has always filed in first degree murder cases. Uh, there wasn't anything uh, specifically directed to a specific fact in this case. It was all preserve notes, preserve evidence, those kinds of things. So is, is there something immediate that you want me to address? Nothing immediate, Judge. I just okay. was making sure that that's what the game plan was. No, we'll, we'll deal with it. And I saw that you had filed a response. I may issue the written order on it um, when we get there. Uh, Ms. Strobel, from the defense standpoint, anything that um, you want me to address? Judge, if the court's going to issue a written order, that's so fine. I think everybody's had a, a chance to bring up their issues. The, my only concern would be preservation of evidence and testing of evidence that none be completed until the court issues orders. None, cons no consumptive testing. Well, I, I thought I saw in one of the motions or the responses that you filed that the prosecution's office agreed that there would be no, consum or no destructive or consumptive testing of evidence until order is entered by the court. That's exactly right, Judge. Okay, there, and that, that's typically the rule, so. Yeah, there is obviously ongoing testing, um, forensic testing in this right. case, but we will stop if there's anything that's gonna be consumptive or destructive and seek the court's approval. And I, and I dealt with those before, yep. so I figured that that would come up if that were an issue. Um, anything else from either side, Mr. Allen? No, Judge, thank you. Ms. Judge, Turkle, Judge I just wanted to bring hold up. Hold on. Um, no, Judge, Ms. Chalmers is going to wrap it up. Thank you, Judge. Um, I just wanted to bring it to the court's attention. I mentioned this to Mr. Allen. I don't know if the court wants us to write a written motion on this. Um, we were requesting 
this has been an issue in other cases, and I think written orders have been issued. Um, it's our understanding this case was originally assigned to Division 5, and then it got rerouted to Division 15, and we've reviewed some Chief Justice orders, and it sounds like usually there's an order by, a written order by the Chief Judge about why it was rerouted, and we haven't received that. Um, and so I don't know if the court I, can... I'm not aware of that, Okay. but what I can tell you is, I think what happened was, um, as you know, um, all the judges in the Fort Judicial District are on a homicide rotation. Right. And it's based purely by number of division. So first homicide goes to division one, second right. homicide goes to division two, on up through, I think, I think we're 24 now. Um, but that's how it's assigned. Um, there is also a, uh, I'm not as good as the clerks of the edX as it, I'm not as good at the clerks at explaining this, but there's also a matrix for assignment of cases to divisions. And if I remember right, it's based on the last two numbers that are in the, uh, on the uh, case number. So what happened in this case was that based on the case number only, it was sent to division five. Once they realized that it was a first degree murder and it should go to the homicide rotation, your was honor just, was next up. I was just next up. Okay. Thank um, you for explaining that. <laughs> that makes sense. We were just confused, and I know that it's an issue that people have raised in other court cases in this jurisdiction, and I just, we didn't have any idea why that happened, but it makes sense. Um, all I can tell you is I was sitting there, and one day I got assigned the case. It okay. Up. That's, Thank you, I Judge. That's what it is. And, it, and it's about like the other homicides that I've had, well, and I'm sure you've seen it where you're in one division because something gets filed and then all of a sudden it's turned into a first degree murder case and it gets moved to a different division. Right. That's exactly what happened. Okay, that makes sense. Thank okay. you very much, Judge. Um, all right, then we're going to recess. Thank you. All rise.